The Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, has postponed the launch of its planned single currency, ECHO. The body agreed to maintain a gradual approach for the launching of the currency. ECOWAS explained that a new date for the launch would be announced later. This was contained in a communique issued at the end of the 57th Summit of the Heads of State and Government of ECOWAS on Tuesday. The body said the postponement was done in order to consolidate the achievements Joining us now is Victor Okai, a former presidential candidate, as well as public and public uh, analysts. We're also joined by financial uh, analyst Mokhtar Mohammed. Thank you both for joining us on The Breakfast. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Mohammed. I'll start with you. What's your reaction to the president's position on the single currency uh, in ECOWAS? I think this is the best way to go. Um, I've never thought they were going to um, be able to achieve it. And so it's good for the president to have come out and tell them the truth. Because we've already seen rivalry. Remember that the anger phone and the franca phone have started, the uh, anger phone has started using the, 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 the eco currency already, even before the final launch of it, trying to get have an advantage over the other countries. And remember that this um, single currency was based on a little, uh, some uh, criteria like a single-digit inflation um, in terms of trade volume between African countries, in terms of um, population growth, in terms of economic activities, and all this was not, they, they have not been able to handle it. So for me, it's not surprising that ECOWAS is um, saying they should stop this for now, and I, I think it's, it's, it's a good um, decision, and the right, uh, it is the right decision and a good decision. Because what ECOWAS should be looking at as a sub-regional body is how to increase trade activities within the sub-region, not have to begin to use single currencies. After you've been able to achieve volume of trade within ECOWAS countries, then you begin to think about um, making single currency to make trade very seamless. For now, there's no trade volume within African countries. Rather, most African countries do more trade volume with China, with the Europeans, with the South Americans, with the Americans, and even within themselves. So what I think the leaders should be addressing is how to begin to increase trade volume within themselves before we begin to think of the single currency. Uh, uh, Mr. Okai, um, is, it not, yeah. is it not belated? Um, I mean, is he expecting the Francophone West African countries to backtrack? Is it what? I'm asking, is it not belated for the president to make this call? Is he expecting the Francophone um, countries to backtrack on its use? See, if anything, I'm very, very happy that the, the Francophones did what they did. We've been so laid back, deceived by the fact that we call ourselves the giant of Africa and that um, we, have, we are the biggest economy on, on the continent. I mean, this is about, uh, how do I put it now? It's about fiscal and, and, and financial responsibility. You have been given a deadline. You know what the deadline is. You know exactly what the conditions are. This is not Nigeria. This is West Africa. You cannot bully other uh, West African nations. We slept on our rights just as we did during our, uh, the African Free Trade uh, Continental Agreement. The same thing is happening right now. If you notice, the conditions were very, very clear. And these conditions were supposed to be some sort of fiscal discipline on the nation's concerns. Nigeria did not comply. Togo, as at early this year when they did, was the only one that did. And before then, Ghana was the only one that consistently every year was meeting the condition. And so the question is, is with all the economies we have in Nigeria, with all that we, who we are, we, we call ourselves as Nigerians, what is the difficulty about complying, you know? And that's the problem. This is, this is what happens when you don't, when there's no proper governance, proper compliance, and fiscal discipline which has characterized the Nigerian economy all this while. So what the French did, if anything, has jolted us back. The president cannot drive West Africa back. If anything, comply and then do the right thing and join the ECO. You cannot be carrying a they can ECOWAS cannot be carrying a dead weight, which all Nigeria right. represents at the moment because we have refused to act responsibly. All right, Mr. Mohammed, uh, what's your reaction to that before I ask you? I don't, I don't, I, I, if you look at the Anglophone countries, the Francophone country, you have to ask yourself how many of them were able to meet this. You're talking about the Togo. We're not talking about other countries. So it's not about, um, 
It's not about Nigeria uh, as a country trying to bully other African countries. Ghana didn't even meet that. We're talking about Togo and want to ask ourselves what is really Togo producing to the Africa in terms of GDP to the general Africa well -being. We're talking about uh, even West Africa. We're talking about other countries. I'm not other African countries have not been able to meet that. So it's not about whether Nigeria is trying to bully. It's about Nigeria looking at it straight to the eyes and telling Africa, the ECOWAS region, that as it stands now, we cannot be able to meet this. We, is it not only Nigeria? You look at Benin Republic also. You look at Senegal. Even the, the so-called uh, Francophone countries too, they've not been able to meet it. As, as also, it was there trying to do politics by uh, moving ahead of the other African countries so that their currency, that currency will start trading before that. So for me, it's even a, a, a big um, 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 putting spine to their wheels where with, with ECOWAS shocking them and say, look, we are no more interested. So that puts spine to whatever plan they have because they were trying to take on due advantage of other Anglophone countries. So uh, for me, I, I don't think um, Nigeria was labor. There's a lot of criteria when it comes to single-digit inflation, when it comes to uh, monetary policy, when it comes to, uh, to physical policy. We're talking about a continent that has not been able to do, do, do trade within themselves. We're talking about a continent that has not been able, a region, not even a continent, a region that will not be able to move in terms of movement of people, goods and services, seamlessly from Nigeria to Ghana or from Ghana. They're talking about a, a region that will not be able to build the infrastructure to meet up with, the, the, with what it means to have single currency. We need to talk about single currency. You need to ask yourself why, why the single currency comes from. Single currency actually started anyway when the European Union decided to have a single. And then when you look at those, those, those countries, you know that in terms of trade volume, they do a lot of trade together. In terms of movement of goods and services, they have the infrastructure. And that is why they realize that, look, for us to make trade within ourselves seamless, we need to have a single currency. That was the whole idea why they came to a single. Single currency is not a political, is not a political uh, 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 slogan. It's not a political, it's not a means for it. It's political tool. Single currency is actually an economic tool to, the, to, to build a vibrant economy for, the, for, a, for a nation and for the region. So we can't continue to play politics with it. And I think this is not about Nigerian bullying any nation. This is about Nigerian telling the nation to their face, look, for now, it seems we are not ready. We're talking about ECOWAS region. We're not, uh, not up to 10% of the ECOWAS region. Both Angaphone or Francophone have been able to meet those criteria. All right, Mr. Okai, what, what does the region stand to gain? Or is it just about copying the EU model? Come again. I said, what does the region stand to gain uh, from this single currency? Or is it just copying uh, what the European Union is doing? Well, no, it's, it's beyond that. You see, a single currency facilitates trade in, in no small way. I mean, if you look at what's been happening, uh, if you're moving from here to Benin, you change currency. If you move from Togo to Ghana, you change currency again. If you're moving from Ghana to, um, is it Sierra Leone or any of the neighboring countries, you begin to change. Now, it creates a lot of problems. With a single currency, it is easy to facilitate trade. Movement, of course, that is another matter altogether, and that is something that's being done. It helps to integrate the sub region um, uh, very much. If you notice Europe, the European Union right now, you can move from country to country, you don't have any encumbrances at all. The economy is stronger for that reason. Euro, the Eurozone is like one nation right now, so they can compete effectively. With the United States, I mean, United States, which is like a, which is almost like a subcontinent on its own, you know. So I think there are more advantages uh, to be gained from it than, than than not being a part of it. Yes. All right. And I'll come back to you, that, Mr. Let me quickly add this. Let me quickly add this. Okay. Uh, having said what I said earlier, uh, I know what the French are trying to do. Uh, my only annoyance in Nigeria is not doing what it's supposed to do. You know, um, if you have a deadline, you should lead by example. But we know the French territory for their mission and what they've been doing. It is important that they should have met all the deadlines before adopting the currency. So to that right. extent, I agree with my colleague there. And, uh, but we need to discuss this. If we had acted more responsibly, there would have been no need to be having this discussion we're having now. So that we didn't pick up our aid. Hey, after considered the trade agreement, we didn't join early enough. Um, Mr. Mohammed, uh, Mr. Kai talked about the French uh, mischief. 
they are being accused of fueling this seeming division. Uh, does this suggest that these countries haven't broken away from their colonial masters? Uh, of course, they have not broken away because uh, um, if you look at these countries, when they have issues, are you looking at Niger? Are you looking at Mali? Are you looking at uh, um, even Senegal? You see that the French are the first people that come to help them in terms of their security challenges. The uh, French have a lot of presence in those countries. So, and you know, the greatest uh, threat to those countries' stability is insecurity, especially in the area of insurgency. So, they know what they tend to gain from the French. And if the French happen to pull out, they know what they tend to lose. I think that is why they are playing to the gallery, because as you stand now, their greatest need is insecurity. And so the only people that can provide that security in the midst of insecurity is the, is the French. So I think that's why they are playing to the gallery of the French. France, it's not because um, um, they are looking at the economic value. In fact, France, French, the French, the France itself have more economic value, uh, gain more economically from, from these countries than they're gaining from them because all, this, all France do for them is to provide security because they are battling an insurgency. I think that is what the advantage and, and you know that security is key to any nation's uh, stability and, and i think that is why france has those advantage uh mr kai on the flip side of the coin uh there are those that are also saying um why are we accusing the french is it not maybe the british is not giving the necessary support to its former colonies uh no i think i think i think it would be insulting to see the uh, looking up to Britain. We are a sovereign nation. We have been independent for about 60 years now. So um, it is not, we do not need to be referring back to Britain anymore. If the others have refused to outgrow the apron strings of their colonial masters as their business. Uh, having said that, um, I, what I would, you see the French as. Mr. Kai. I think we lost you there. Are you? Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, hello. yeah. Okay, could you hello? recap the last thing you said? Yeah. yeah. So I said the, the French made their former uh, colonies sign agreement with them. They gave them independence or held on to the lease. So they were not completely independent, not economically active. And that's why you find the situation that you have uh, till now. Their currencies are tied to the French France before the euro and the domicile. To a very large extent in the in the, uh, uh, central bank and all that. So, but this will free them hopefully. And uh, so we do not the, the issue of uh, Britain. We are completely free from Britain. We do not need them to be uh, spoon feeding us or guiding us. And that's what the French is. The French, right. uh, the practical countries need right now. Okay, I think we, we, we have a clear idea what you stand, where you stand on that. I'll come back to Mr. Uh, Mohammed. It, obviously, you, you don't think that the time is right. When will it be a right time to introduce or begin the use of um, the single currency? But let me add up to what Mr. Okai said. Um, I think the British are out of the European Union, and you realize that um, they are trying to begin to do businesses most of the with their colony, and that is why immediately you saw that the EU nation visited Nigeria. The then, the then British Prime, British Secretary, uh, the British Secretary of State also visited Nigeria immediately when they were trying to leave the EU. So whatever I mean, the EU, the, the British will come back to us just like the the. the the EU or the or the France uh, francophone country are depending on that. I think they intend to do more business with Nigeria after their Brexit. So I think the, we still need each other. We we can say they are coming to colonize us. About when is the right timing? I think the right timing is when we begin to do trade volume together. For now, there's nothing that is is is, is bringing us together. In terms, most of the things that bring us together are things that we even import from other lands, and then we are looking at cheaper ways of, 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 of making a profit. That's why you see we import cars from, uh, Fr from France, and then, I mean, we can bring cars from the U from Europe or from, or from America, and we take it to Benet so that we can bring it into Nigeria because we want to cut corners. Until we begin to do business within ourselves, within manufacturing sector, within goods and servicing sectors, then they, we will begin to see needs for that. For now, we, we are still more interested in doing business with the Europeans, doing business with the Chinese. And so for me, I think the time will be right when we begin to do more business within ourselves. Then we have to build that infrastructure. What is making European Union strive is not because of um, the kind of business that they do, which is also one, but in terms of movement of those goods and services from point A to point B. 
That is one thing we've not been able to achieve. And to achieve that, you need to have the infrastructure. How, 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 how long can it take you to get, to get a flight from Nigeria to Guinea? There's not any flight operating from Nigeria to Guinea directly. So all these are part of the challenges that we have as a nation that we need to address as a, as a region. We begin to see how we can move within our regions. Let's see. Just of recent, you see, even Nigerians doing business in Ghana are having issues with the Ghanaian government. So those are part of the things that needs to be addressed, not just in terms of having a single currency. When we yeah. address in terms of doing business within ourselves, when we address in terms of movement of goods and services within ourselves, and when we address in terms of infrastructure, then we can now begin to say it's time for the single currency because we are doing more business within ourselves. And that also will even help. Uh, our economy grow in terms of the exchange rate volatility that we are seeing within other uh, uh, African countries with the with right. euro, with with with, with euro, with, um, with 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 pounds and with the dollar. So what right, we need Mr. to do now is to come back to the round table and see how we can do business within ourselves. Then we can begin to say it's time for the single currency. All right, I, I'll, I'll ask this question. I'm looking at the communique um, at the end of the meeting yesterday, and one of the submissions there for Nigeria, Mr. Kai, my question is addressed to you. And one of the communique uh, was to develop a new uh, roadmap for the ECOWAS single currency. Uh, and what are some of these uh, strategies you think we need to put in place if we are to get to that point? Um, there is for me, there is no need for a new roadmap. There has always been a roadmap. We did not meet the conditions of the last one. What, what, what achieves is, what, I mean, what guarantee is there we will meet uh, the new one? The time to, I just, the question you asked Mohammed earlier, I'd like to ask you this as well. The time for, to do, to, to have the echo is not tomorrow, it's not next year, it's last year, if you ask me. The reason is that, it, it will facilitate economic integration. Economic integration will help trade. And don't forget that we'll begin to have common fiscal policies like the Eurozone. We'll begin to have, uh, you know, fiscal, we'll begin to have discipline among ourselves and begin to talk. I even see a situation where we might decide that the, the, the West African um, region entirely can become completely bilingual. It is, that will foster our our unity more than anything else. For as long as we postpone it, the issues that happen in Ghana will continue because there is nothing binding us economically for now. Although there's ECOWAS and there are other uh, sub-regional uh, economic organizations within ECOWAS, but this is the strongest bond that will begin to help us to take the uh, things like uh, we we'll begin to look at custom barriers, begin to look at trade, begin to look at currencies. Um, our budget and things like that. So if you ask me, the time to start is last year. We, the, we will never be ready. If, and if you leave it to Nigeria, we will never be ready. You seem to have a di I mean, different position on this matter. Uh, Mr. Kai wants us to begin the implementation use of this um, currency. Why you, Mohammed, uh, is on the other side of the divide. If we are dis... We're not together on the way forward. What is then left for us? Because even if we go ahead and say, okay, let's start the process, what could be some of the things that will um, hinder us? Uh, Mr. Mohammed. <laughs> well, what we, we just realized that we, just realized that we are going nowhere because there won't be any business within ourselves. I, I keep saying the key for any integration in business, the key where I have, why, why would I want to have a partnership with TV Plus? Because I do something with TV Plus. I'm just using TV Plus Africa. As, as an example, I can't just come up and say, oh, we're not doing anything. No, I want to be part of the people. There must be something that binds us together. We must have done volume of things together. You said, okay, come and let's partner towards something. So for now, there is not that link between ECOWAS. You already have the rivalry between the, the Franca phone and the Angra phone. We have not even addressed that rivalry. And the best way we can address those rivalries is when we do business together. Then you will not even address in terms of movement. I keep saying infrastructural decay is huge. That's why the Chinese are having in way into anger phone, franca phone, and giving us substandard because we don't even have. What are we do? What, what are we looking? We're not even looking at the financial integration of our big banks within Africa. How many banks? The biggest bank in Ghana is that bank in Nigeria. The biggest bank in Nigeria is it present in all African sub region? So they, there's a lot of things we need to look at financial integration also in terms of our financial institution. How ready they are there for this? So all of these things come hand in hand. So 
when you don't have that, there is nothing we can say we want to do now. For me, I still believe that the time for this to happen is not now. We need to get our act together, like uh, Mr. Alkai said. We need to get our act together. Yes, no policy has a good time. A policy that is good can start now. But they must be the fundamental foundation for that policy to succeed. Otherwise, it will not succeed. It will just be like a house that is built on top of sand that when the flood comes in, it will just wash it off. We need to begin to pray the foundation. The foundation for that is business within ourselves. When you begin to do business within ourselves, you begin to address inflation. You begin to address job creation. You begin to address uh, uh, exchange rate volatility. So those are the things that need to be, and these things are not things that will be addressed by, by leaders in Africa. Most of these things we should be in, especially the financial inclusion, which is the bent of business, must be addressed by the various CBNs, various central banks of, the, of, of these countries. So for now, we are not going, we are not making any headway because we have not put the foundation. Once the foundation is right, we don't say every of the indices must be correct, but once the foundation is right, we can take it from there. All right, Mr. Kai, the, the, yeah. there is an obvious political situation, um, diplomacy, uh, diplomatic um, issues between Nigeria and some African countries. Uh, off the top of my head, Ghana, uh, we just had a recent situation with them. And then we know that South Africa still has this issue with, uh, you know, uh, xenophobia and the likes. The political climate, is it ready for this single currency that you propose? <laughs> See, let me say this to you. Um, uh, with, with, with all respect to Mr. Uh, Mohammed, uh, sentiment, yes. I want to say this. A single currency would have solved all of this. Let me tell you why. What a single currency does is make sure that you are, there is fear, I mean, you can no longer borrow irresponsibly like individual nations would do because it will have an impact or effect on the currency. Okay, you would watch your inflation levels. There are conditions. Your budget will be, I mean, everything will be determined centrally with regard to the currency. And also trade as well. How you open up your borders and all of that, both within the region and to those coming from outside. These are simple things. It's the discipline that it will bring that will confer advantage you know, to the currency. Any other way, as long as we remain Nigeria without any check from outside, if you have bad leadership, there is no peer review. Other presidents cannot interfere. But right now, if, if, if you have that single currency, if you are, if whatever you do, you must recall, you have, you must be recall to the other, to the other countries because there is an impact, uh, on, on the, on, on the other, on the other countries in the sub-region as well. I think the discipline it will confer is something that all the countries in West Africa uh, will benefit from. Look at the euro. Look at the eurozone, for instance. You saw what happened with Greece. You saw what happened with uh, Italy. Countries are no longer acting responsibly anymore. That's why I think we need it. It is a condition for for the strengthening of the economy of West Africa. As long as we remain individually without any peer. Uh, uh, check. We will call, I mean, we will just find ourselves the kind of situation we have. The problem we have in Ghana, I repeat, would not have happened because trade will be discussed commonly uh, as one. The economy will be discussed as one. How we relate will be discussed as one. You know, uh, migration, employment, all will be discussed. These are the kind of things you have in, 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 in the Eurozone, which is the model that we are copying. All right. I must say thank you very much to the both of you for your time and the insight you've brought to this conversation on the single currency. Thank you again. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Thank you. All right, Mr. Mohammed and Mr. Kai, do take care.